Well, how do I pray? How do you pray? Well, I was asked by a sub, how do you pray? I responded, I thought it was an individual thing for most. But it's a good question and suggestion. So here we go. You know, one of the spiritual practices we're supposed to figure out is prayer. But if you don't normally pray, that can be a real challenge. As Jesus instructed his disciples how to pray, he said, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so they can be seen by men. But you, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. That sounds like, get quiet and meditate to me. And Luke 5 says, But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray in seclusion. And in Luke 11, we hear some of Jesus' thoughts on prayer. Luke's gospel says that Jesus prayed often and continually. And Jesus withdrew from people, daily life activities, and the demands of his ministry to be alone with the Father. Jesus' disciples had no doubt noticed his prayerfulness. And they asked him to teach them how to pray. So Jesus starts his instruction by saying, when you pray. For the follower of Jesus, prayer is not a matter of it. But when? Rather, it is the natural result of a belief in your personal God. But what then follows is what has come to be known as the Lord's Prayer. And I really believe if you want to know the Lord's Prayer, read John 17. I'll put it up at the end. I'll let it scroll on text. All right. That's great. The prayer is also recorded in Matthew. The two passages are very similar. The only difference being that Luke's version is shorter in various spots. However, the conceptions shared are the same and are given in the same order. Matthew indicates that prayer was shared with a large crowd during the Sermon on the Mount, and Luke indicates the prayer to be part of Jesus' answer to a question from the disciples about how to pray. The big takeaway from both is the concept of our Father. First, Jesus instructs us to approach God as Father. God is our Heavenly Father. Next, Jesus says that we should pray, Hallowed be thy name. This is saying the Father is worthy of our praises because he is perfect. And he is complete. Yeah, there is, why do you call me good? There is none good but one. Next is the kingdom to come thing. In Matthew's version, he says, Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And Luke's version is communicating the same thing, just in a shorter form. The prayer for God's kingdom to come is longing for God's heart to reign in our hearts and his will to be done in our lives. I personally believe in a God who works all things for the good of those who love him. So love him and welcome his heart into yours. Next, Jesus says we should ask that God would supply our basic needs. Simple enough, if not greedy. Then Jesus explains, Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. You know, the golden rule. Okay. And Jesus puts an emphasis on the final portion of the prayer. He says, Keep us from the very real power of temptation in our lives. The fact is that we are tempted in many ways each day to be unfaithful to what has been written on our hearts. This is basically be kind to our families and to our friends, you know, do unto others. Now to some personal truth. Silence is hard for me. Prayer has always been a struggle and meditation all but impossible. My mind goes 100 miles an hour 99% of the time trying to pray or attempting meditation. I just couldn't get myself to focus on it or make any real progress in my spiritual life. I don't think my struggle is much different than most others. But simply, prayer is merely raising your heart and mind to that of the Creator. Emotional cries from our hearts. Yeah. It's our emotions that pray. Remember, Jesus also said the only way to the Father is through Him. And then Jesus left us with His Mother, the Holy Spirit, to be our guidance counselor. He said in John 14, 
I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, you know, to help you and to be with you forever. Forever. So I speak to the Spirit within so that I can see God face to face. And thus I speak to Jesus, Holy Mother, the Holy Spirit, in his name. They both know the Father very intimately. And this process seems to give me the inner peace that I'm looking for.